Hi kids and welcome to assignment number four. I want to start off assignment number four by revisiting something that you had to do in assignment number three, which dealt with this diagram here. With this diagram, we can delve deeply into the concept of energy transformation, which is a huge concept in science and a huge concept in NGSS. You probably remember from middle school that energy can be classified into two basic types. There is potential energy and kinetic energy. Potential energy is energy that's stored and ready for use. Kinetic energy is energy that is in use or energy in motion. But beyond that, we can also define energy in other ways as well by further categorizing it into things like solar energy and chemical energy and wind energy. And with this diagram here, we realize that when we are getting our electricity from coal-powered power plants, we are actually getting energy that comes all the way from over 300 million years ago. So let's begin. During the Carboniferous period, over 300 million years ago, the sun was bathing the Earth's surface as it is today with sunlight and heat. And the plants then, just like the plants now, absorbed that sunlight and used it in the process of photosynthesis to make their own chemical energy. Now, that chemical energy was used by the plants in all their vital processes just to stay alive. But not all of it. Some of that chemical energy was stored in the plant itself or in the plants themselves. And eventually those plants would die. And as you might recall from last week, the environment on the earth during the Carboniferous period was such that the, the decaying plants could not decay aerobically. They had to decay anaerobically, which to make a long story short, meant that they turned into coal. And that coal still exists today underground. And we humans have learned that in that coal, you still have that chemical energy that was once in the plants. It survived all this time and it's still there in that coal in the form of these carbon-based molecules. Now, when we take coal and we put it in a furnace at a power plant, and then we light it on fire, we are actually initiating the chemical process of combustion. Combustion is a fancy name for the chemical reaction that occurs when the carbon atoms in the coal react violently with oxygen in the air. It's an exothermic reaction, meaning it's a reaction that releases a lot of heat. So the coal, I'm sorry, the carbon and the oxygen chemically combine to make carbon dioxide, but also produce ash and a lot of heat. And that heat is what we're after because that heat is then used to boil water, to create steam. The steam is then directed through pipes in these, and it sort of creates these strong currents of air, meaning wind energy. So we have just taken thermal energy from the combustion to create wind energy in the form of this fast moving steam. That steam then strikes the turbine blades and pushes those blades and gets those turbines to rotate. So now we've just created mechanical energy. And we have those spinning parts which are connected to the magnet, so the magnet is also spinning, right? And as you know, when a magnet spins, so do the uh, invisible magnetic field lines around it. And when those magnetic field lines cross over conductive wire, it gets electrons that are in that wire to move from one copper atom to another. I want to make sure I make this clear. Some of you thought we were creating electrons. We're not creating the electrons. The electrons were already there as part of the copper atoms. But when we pass those magnetic field lines over those copper atoms, we induce electric current. We get those electrons to start moving from one atom to another. And when you create electric current, you effectively have electrical energy. The same electrical energy that you are using when you plug in your phones and your laptops and your TVs at home. So it really is fair to say that if we get our electricity from coal-powered power plants, even just some of the electricity, that means that we are tapping into energy that really originated over 300 million years ago with the sun. I hope this helped a little bit and um, good luck with assignment number four.